of our favorite streams from years back, the Ram River. And uh, we're gonna have a go here today. Um, weather is shaping up to be kind of the same as it has been for a while, which is sort of mid 20s Celsius, which is what, like maybe 80s yep. Fahrenheit? Well, high 70s. High 70s, really, Fahrenheit, right? So it's not super warm. And what you always love to get on a cutthroat toe stream yes. is bright sun. Yep, and so you <laughs> yeah. can see, and for they can see, eats, and they're right? happy as. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's been cloudy, not cloudy, sorry, smoky. Uh, even right now, my mouth is kind of that smoky dry. But, you know, that's how it goes. Um, we're just starting out here. Amelia's already caught a really nice cutthroat just down below us flying the drone. That was really cool. It was awesome. And yeah, we're, yeah I think today will be, uh, well, the usual low clear water. Uh, some kind of big uh, tractor dry fly up top. Yeah. Uh, dropper nymph, either a foot to two feet down and just works the troughs, the pools, the edge of the seams, anything where there's a current break with depth over kind of belly button deep, you're good as gold to go. Eh? Absolutely, yeah. Do you find value in our free sharing of knowledge and experience and want to support us? Gain access to our extended length ad-free videos as well as our in-depth producer's notes that turn every video into an in-depth fly fishing class. Join our Patreon group today. Just simply move over and fish this one, get a little closer, again, cutthroat water so I can keep my fly up as much as I can. And how about right up here? There we go, right along that edge. Anyone? Oh, there's one. Yep, nice, awesome, took my nymph. Gonna go home. Am I going to get this guy out of here? Yes, I am. He's on that ledge. Okay. Okay, let's bring him here. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, nice fish. Really nice cutty. There we go, guys. Beautiful cutty. Pop that nymph. And let's let him, let her go actually, it looks like. Yeah, that's just beautiful. <laughs> awesome. So this is one of my least favorite crossings on the river, probably number five on the top five, brutal crossings. And it's just because you get all this rock shelf, all this slabby rock. And it won't be too bad today, but <laughs> in high water when it's waist deep, yeah, it's a miserable slippery thing that, you know, and if you screw up, you're just going to go swimming down into the rapid there and disappear into the cliff down there. But other than that, good times. Well, one thing I remember clear as a bell from our days of fishing up here is this next run that we're in. There's, a, again, quite a bit of sort of what I would call pocket water, slots and troughs and whatnot. And I'll never forget catching this gorgeous male brown that had this brown. I mean, what am I saying? <laughs> gorgeous <laughs> male cutthroat. Yeah, yeah kind of a brown trout fisherman now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that gorgeous red cheek brown. No, oh, it was a cutthroat. It was trout. a red cheek cutthroat, and it was that, it had a good kite. And this was in the days where we were getting, getting into those ones fish. that were like 20, 21 inches. And it was a beautiful fish. Hey? Absolutely. And that head coming up to eat in. I think it was a caddis I was using at the time. Yeah. Evening. It was evening. Yeah. That's really cool because there's nothing but rock shelves coming off that cliff. You can see the ridges coming off the cliff. Well, those extend under the river and it's just nothing but slats in the rocks. And we've got some really nice fish in here. You have your memory, and I have my memory of a 21 and a half inch male, uh, possibly the pro probably the same fish, uh, a couple of years apart, yeah. and just a gorgeous fish too. And I just remember that at, that was at the end of the day. We normally go up the cliff here to end the day, but that day I said, ah, I'm just going to go up here. Yeah, we decided to fish an extra bit. Yeah, and, and it was it was there. So um, I bet 10 bucks says magic doesn't repeat because magic doesn't repeat. Uh, 
But let's go enjoy this run and let's just see what uh, what I bring on the beetle with a two foot dropper to a tungsten bead. Amazing, hey, they could be anywhere, but they could also be nowhere. Just right along this stuff. Get this fly going to start the day. It's not great water, but it's good water. Right up in this stuff. Anywhere there's a current break, a seam, a break, a current seam, or a current break seam, you know, take your pick. And it's always a pain in the butt to get this fly going. Um, you can see, I'm gonna walk over here and I just wanna get knee deep and just do a reach cast into a pocket right up in there. Will he come? Ah, who knows? Is there even a big fish living here again? Who knows? But I'm out here, I'm fishing, I'm standing knee deep in Mountain River. That's the point. Absolutely, that's the point. Right up in there. Oh man, those are the days. You can just, I can see that big head come up and eat that fly. Those are the memories, man. Anywhere it's blue green. That's a distinct color on this river. If it doesn't have that color, it doesn't have depth and you're hard pressed to get yourself into fish. Okay, don't just go a full bore into it. Pick off this side, that side. Start short. There he is. That's yeah, why you start short. Tail out, eh? Yeah, well, I know the edge of the tail out of that run rock there. Yeah, right. for sure. But also just kind of sitting off the back side of it there. It'd be great if he just popped off. Hands wet, flip him upside down, and just pop. There goes the fish. Wicked. I'm using a brown trout leader on a cutthroat trout stream. Right up in here again, off those rocks. There's bound to be two or three more fish along this stuff. <laughs> oh man, I hope so. Now I sound like a dumbass know-it-all. Come on now. There's gotta be another fish here. Where's it gonna be? There he is. Came right downstream at it. That was awesome. He came right off that far shelf there. And you can see, right on, Mom. yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cut. You got it? Got it huh? Starting to get cutthroat finger. That's where basically you release so many fish that your fingers start getting chewed up. And well, after a couple days of this, that's what starts to happen. Kind of fun. Oh, it rise up in the pocket, next blue pocket up top there. That was gorgeous. And I've tied on this foam fly with metallic crystal chenille underside because I wanted it to attract these fish from a long ways. Um, these fish in this clear water, missed them. Come on, eat it now. Come on, eat it up. There he is. Oh, you have a little bugger. Anyway, the idea is that I put a crystal chenille uh, beetle on here, uh, the undersized crystal chenille, and that will attract these fish from a long ways away, like a long ways away, because the water's so clear. Um, earlier in the year, it doesn't matter as much when the water, like as you can tell by the cliffs on this river, there's, <laughs> when it's high water, you, thunderstorm season, you, you don't even bother showing up here because this will be, this river will be the same dang color as that cliff over there. Just a big flippity do cast. Should be one or two more in this pocket up here. I'm actually hoping for somebody that's more in the 16, 17 inch range. I mean, obviously the 20 inches that we were talking about, but I think that era and time is gone in this section. There he is. Yep. That's what I was looking I for. Was waiting for that. Yeah, so was I. That's perfect spot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, is that the guy that rose you think? No, he rose up there. Okay. And let's see if I can swing one around here. It's a really pretty fish. Here you go. There you go. Say when you are. Okay, so one, two, three, and a miss. So that's four fish. Um, I think there's gotta be one more, maybe two more in here. There he is. He came right up on my dry fly. Man, I, that's a nicer fish. it is a better fish. I was going to walk right past this and I thought, well, there's an edge to that rock shelf. I better just toss one in there. Yeah. And yeah, there go. that's a lay oops. A little faster water. There we go. Wicked. It's almost like I don't need a nymph on today. 
Okay, as we go up, this has traditionally had smaller fish. Just because it's faster, it's more shelf water, not a lot of broken rock. But that just screams a 10 to 14 inch cut over there. Just on the other side of that, that uh, washed gra gravel. And I don't know, do I break this in half or? Yeah, I do. I would start short and just put it right in there. Let him come off that shelf if he's there. What about in those broken rocks there? Actually, what about, what about right back in there? Right on the edge of that green, greeny blue stuff right at the top of the rapid. Anybody? No? Okay. And then bring that back, roll it. Big upstream end right off of that rock shelf. But the guy was really smart. Instead of casting across this all the way up, why not just take a couple more steps, get across, and drop his fly on their heads, and just walk. It's only knee deep, right? There we go, come on. Yeah, oh, there he is. Okay, guys, so that's basically walking up 70 yards of this pocket water in a rock shelf. Just working and picking off the edges of all the structure and just feeding your fly right in there. I don't know, what did I land? Three, four, five fish, miss two or three other fish. It can be that good. Um, in this kind of water, even if it's pressured busy on a low population uh, cutthroat trout stream, the reality is you can fish follow up on pe uh, behind people. You can just go out there and work the edges, work the pockets, and nobody's gonna catch every fish. And just because I went through, yeah, I got whatever I caught, there's still a few that I missed and probably a few that weren't active because it's 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, it can, it can withstand a few other people on the river and you can still get out here and have fun and you can work the edges of this stuff and just work it and enjoy a few cutthroat trout come up to your dry. Okay, guys, I'm just trying to hit this soft pocket right here Keeping that rod high. There's just a nice, you can see how it just drifts along beautifully slowly. That's where I would put a cutthroat, a lazy cutthroat up, maybe a little higher, right up in there. Nice and tight, keeping that, all that tippet, all that leader off the water. How about a little further over? I gotta get a little further into that really calm stuff. Yeah, right in there. Oh yeah, right there, had to be a fish, ha <laughs> ha. Yep, awesome man, right on. Beauty, okay. Grab him upside down, keep him in the water while I take that fly out. Okay guys, I'm just simply gonna keep working up this little flat pocket that's right out in front of me here, all the way up should hold a fish, because that's that calm water, right? Just uh, get it up there, keep it on top, and let that drift down. I have to keep working my way up this, and yeah, I'm standing about thigh deep. But that's the only way I can get good control in fishing this kind of water, is to be this close to it. Fish don't care, they don't care. This is cutthroat we're talking about. I always get excited about the heads of pools in this river. I don't know why I always did. Maybe it's because I've always caught a fish in the heads of particular runs and pools. I'm surprised that I haven't had a look up in that, but it's gonna come. Oh yeah, there's one. Yeah, as I said, it's gonna come. Okay, I should be able to just flip this guy. Here's a personal pet peeve pool for me. Look at all this upwelling. It just kind of comes up and boily, 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 boily. Um, I've never done more than I think about a 13 inch fish here. One day maybe. Um, it looks like it's now set up at the very top with a nice gravel, uh, gravel shelf. And if I put my money, I'd say it's probably gonna be up there. I might get one on an imp back here that's kind of swirling around, kind of that six to 10 inch range, maybe a foot. But if I'm gonna be a bigger fish, I'm gonna be somewhere on that shelf up at the head. Let's go. Crazy. Well, maybe, there he was, that was a six incher. Awesome, who knew? Who knew? Who knew indeed? There he is. As I was saying, there might even be a little, there might be some six inches in this boiling upwelling because that's what happens. 
that's you know <laughs> that's classic that right there is absolutely classic to that kind of water right in here just right in this see all this is just boiling up hey eh? this is just a big upwelling never 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 great stuff put it a little too far across anybody on that shelf over there nope i'm looking in the water i'm not seeing anything dancing around either let's come inside this right in this right along in this here he is there he is <laughs> right off that shelf and again it, it gets kind of predictable as anything well when you fished here 45 years and you go hey that's what usually happens and look at that i don't know 10 12 inch fish whatever that is it's bigger than nine i can tell you that because i have a you know a pretty good reference of anyway has to be a fish coming into this drop-off zone. Keep playing that. Hey, one more up. Oh, yeah. Little dinks through there, but that's okay. Quite a few of them. Oh, yeah, there is a better fish. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, that one's nice. Awesome. Okay, let's try to bring him in through here. If I can. Oh, uh, you're not going to be landed right away, are you, buddy? Come on, over you come. Let's try to get you into some slack. Come on, come on. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, come on. Up you come. Up you come, and yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah. So in the fight there, my dropper nymph did just unfortunately end up in his peck fin, but what a stunner of a cutthroat for colors. Yeah, just gorgeous colors, guys. Look at those colors. Just stunning. Okay, I see it right in here in front of me, right off that one brown. Oh yeah, come on, that's the spot. Oh yeah, and just pop that off and away he goes. Oh, I just wanna play this fly off of a few more drifts off of this stuff up here, because I got it on, so whoa. Stand up, there we go, that was a little guy. Yeah, they're just trying to come up and nail it. Come on and eat the thing. Eat it. Oh, come on, there he is, little guy. Ah, it's fun, definitely fun. Fun summer fishing. There we go, little guy and little guy's gone. Yeah, this, uh, this is one of my favorite long time pools. I I think uh, my best memory was with my friend Rick just after high school we came in here and it was one of those eight above from for you American folks that's you know high 40s 
and this pool came alive. It was just a drizzly rain. It wasn't enough to turn the river off color or raise it. It was just a drizzly cold rain. My friend Rick and I just stood here in a, and it had to be a blue winged olive hatch. Um, yeah, I didn't know. I couldn't tell you what it was because I didn't know when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old. I didn't know what the hell blue winged olive was. And we caught fish and it was spectacular. The fish dropped out of the depths and were right out here just feeding. Back then it wasn't all covered with this shale on the bottom, it was rock and these fish were just, you know, in, the, in, in, in knee deep water and the fish were coming up. And I got one fish, I don't, I don't know if I got it or Rick got it, 21 three quarter by 13 and a half around. And that was just a fat fish. And it, it's cool, through the years, there's uh, been a couple different attempts you know, just up here off this rock shelf. There's been a different, couple different attempts by beavers of all things to build a, a beaver hut right in the corner there. And the other thing was, it was really, I don't know if it's cool, but after that day and that piss and rain and that, that epic mayfly hatch, my buddy Rick decided he was gonna go straight up, right up that rock shelf. That's how he was gonna get out of that. <laughs> That's how he got out of that canyon that day, piss and rain ice cold, numb toes, feet. And I always looked at him, I was like, holy shit, dude. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't even know if he was there. I think he was actually up this, if I remember it was up this uh, kind of orange rock, line of orange rocks here. And I said, nah, I'm gonna go back over here, at least in this gully where there's some loose stuff. I don't know who's dumber, but we're still here. No, it's just really cool um, being back in this kind of a place. There's always a gorgeous fish or two, as you saw Amelia had fun with always something neat and just yeah just a really cool we're only a couple miles downstream of ram falls here and you know it's catch and release didn't catch anything didn't see anything bigger today so either the angling pressure is such that the fish aren't the bigger fish aren't wanting to come up which i don't believe uh, they'd at least come up and knows it i you know we, if you're out if you know people that are coming in here and killing fish, even though it's a catch and release stream, please, please, please. You know, these fish live 24, 25 years. This river's only been catch and release for 22 years. Easily could be fish that predate catch and release still living here. So if you know people that are killing fish coming in here, even one or two fish, and they think, oh, what's one or two fish? It's everything to this river. I mean, everything. We used to come in here and we'd know the fish. We'd catch the same fish. It's gonna sound like a story, but I can show you pictures of Big Mama. Um, she first caught her when 16 inches, and I caught her 11 straight years. And at least 45 times that I caught and released that one fish. And there were three pools in, in, in this river where she would always start the spring here and then spend the summer between the other two pools back and forth. I could tell you all sorts of stories about that, and hopefully I will sometime. But that's one fish, and it got to the point where in 2005, when I, when I no longer saw her, I caught a 16-inch fish that was a spitting replica image of that same fish, and it was been that one fish. So you know Gen X are being passed down. It's really cool, but we can't have people killing even one or two fish because it's the absolute lifeblood to make sure these fish have a chance to get to be 15, 10, 15, 20, 23 24 years old because those are the fish that you're going to remember i promise you i remember every single 18 19 22 23 and a half inch the biggest one ever 20 i was at 24 three quarter 25 three quarter i don't even have 25 three quarter because nobody ever believed that there's a 26 inch cutthroat trout in this river if we allow it to happen it can happen but we need everybody to continue doing it. There's no reason that we're not catching 18 inch fish in these pools. There's no reason. And I, 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 I hate to tell you, but it's on, the onus is on all of us. There's heaps of people out here. How we treat these fish, how we catch and release these fish will dictate how long they live. Give them a chance, we got a chance uh, to see those fish again. But it's on every one of us to treat every single fish well because I promise you, there's only gonna be room for one or two fish over 18 inches per pool, and there's only one good holding pool that'll hold those fish every 800 meters. That's a half mile. Every half mile, there's one spot to hold one or two good fish in this river. And if you eliminate those fish from growing, you know, you, you, I'm sorry, you're not gonna have what I experienced. I really for, feel sorry for the next generation that you're not gonna 
um, experience what I experienced because they won't be here for you to experience that. And, and, the, and I hope that you do. And I hope that people can realize what this can be, what this is, and allow it to continue. Okay, so Amelia just had a whale of a time fishing uh, dry flies. Just a big black bone, uh, bone beetle. Now, how about a foam beetle? Um, now I'm going to nymph it. I don't normally nymph this. Um, but I'm going to. I bet you I catch a couple fish. I'm down um, indicator six feet down to 4x. I've got a true hair's ear at the very bottom point fly. It's got an oversized tungsten bead as well as lead wrap inside the fly and underneath the, and the base. So it's going to be heavy. And then I've got the oversized tungsten uh, hair's ear with copper tail sparkly stuff. And we're just going to get it through there. The idea is with that really heavy stuff, small heavy stuff, just get it down and see if you can get a, a couple fish to come up. Because that's really deep. Like that's easily a 10 foot deep trough through there. And all I'm looking for is the fish that doesn't want to come up, but is willing, to, uh, up to the dry fly, but is willing to at least come up and have a look at a couple nymphs. Let's go have a go. Now, what we didn't tell you was we just finished swimming in here. So <laughs> we walked out here and just went, jumped out. Uh, you know, clothing was optional, I think. That's kind of how it works, isn't it? We just swam through here, so. Oh, <laughs> I don't think he cares that I swam through here. Which fly did he take? My money would be on the copper tail. Why? Because it's cutthroat trout, and cutthroat trout are kind of like dory. Ooh, shiny. Yep, that's exactly what he took. He added a few wraps, because that's what small fish do. Whee! And now we're left with that because, well, that's a small fish thing. Okie dokie. Yeah, that fish got me. So now, <laughs> I'm back in the game. Right on. Right up that seam again. I like that seam. Got a lot of good fish in that seam. Hmm. Shockingly, I was not very deep. Right? Right up in there. Let's do this. There he was. That looks like the color of fish that I saw above that rock earlier. Nice. Bit better fish, love. Sweet. Thanks, little buddy. Beauty. That's not a bad fish. Real gorgeous fish. Awesome. Holy cow, buddy. Sweet. He took the copper. Yeah, that looks nice. Gorgeous, gorgeous. fish. There he is. Had to be another one in there, right? Yeah, it's the fly depth is what's going on here. It's that big fly at the bottom. It's got that super duper oversized tungsten bead. It's getting down. So the whole point in that is just, you know, Amelia had dry flies. You had a lot of fun on dry fly, hey? Oh, I really did. Yeah, you know what? I just picked off really mostly this side, hey? The one side of the stream and then a little bit on the other. Obviously had a few decent sized fish yeah, you know nothing, the, the clone fish but yeah. nothing huge come up and and really knows that yeah. beetle you know they and love the, to do and the whole purpose of the exercise was to follow it up with the nymphs yeah. you know as much fun as you had i caught as many fish awesome. just put the double nymph set up on yes. and go have a go and i bet you i caught as many fish as you did on the dry and that's just it and that's the thing about cutthroat trout streams guys is you know you can use actually a lot of different tactics that are going to be really successful for yep. you and I bet you if I tie down a little streamer, the one bigger fish that's about 18 inches sitting in here, I bet you he'd come and have a look at that. I but bet he would. We're going to move on up to the next pool and probably repeat this whole process all over again. Yep. Okay. 
has to be a fish along this. Gosh, you'd think so. Okay, here we go, right to the head. Right in there. Look at that drift. Yes. Yeah. As I gave it, honestly, as it was starting to drag, guys, that's what happened there. I was picking up and it was already dragging. Yeah, if I can show you guys that, that's just a stunning, stunning slash. Got that, Davey? Yep. Nice. And away she goes. Keep moving that along. Maybe he's a little higher now. Right there, yeah. Maybe a little oh, there he is. Yeah. See, that's just take right. some time, right? Yeah. Again, that's something that has come through quite a bit here, guys, is, you know, especially if you're in a deeper pocket when you're cutthroat trout fishing, you know, again, almost let those dry flies linger a bit. Really nice cut on this fish, honestly. Show you guys that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that cut. Just beautiful. Okay, back in the water and just pop that fly in. You got that, love? Yep. Gorgeous. See ya, bud. Again, you know, keep those fish in the water much as possible, especially in dry, hot conditions. Really important. Part of the ha-ha uh, in reading water is you have to be able to read this. This literally is wall to wall, nothing but fine gravel. Um, just shingly fine stuff that moves around a lot. And when you look up this river, you know, there can only be so many places for a fish. And it's usually gonna be right along this cliff here. If you got a rock shelf or a, a couple rocks over here along a trough, sure. But it's gonna be in this broken green, dancing kind of choppy water up ahead of me and just kind of play the edges of the dark, which is the edge of the rock. So um, down here, back here, no. I mean, look at this. This is just like walking on a sidewalk with a bit of water on top of it and that ain't ever gonna hold fish unless you got a sea run something or another but no and the other thing is this was always 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 another case of these uh, rock shelf pockets where it always kept a 17 to 19 inch cut usually a male and back in the day there was not a lot of fish here and it was usually one and done but with dynamics changing i'm probably i i guess there's gonna be two or three in that 10 to 15 inch range hopefully not but at the same time, hey, how do you want your biomass? Do you want a few smaller fish or one bigger fish? Well. So I'll literally walk out here, no problem, because I know, well, there's not gonna be any fish out here. There's just not, it's just, you know, so you may as well stay knee deep and just start to work along the green, blue-green pockets, right? And just do this. Just literally keep doing this. Uh, stay out here and go upstream ahead of you just in the edge of the drop-off zone and you know that's not likely a bit more likely is just on the edge of the rocks in the green pockets and then i'm going to do one more before i just right up in here and now i'm going to look across there i'm going to do a little bit of a high stick reach mend and just kind of dance and see if anybody comes up on that out of that only water they could possibly be. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep working up. I'm just gonna reach mend that. Just high stick mend, high stick mend. Not high expectations. You can hear it in my voice. It's like, yeah, okay, well. Now I'm starting to see a rock shelf on the bottom up here. The water's fast. So you gotta make sure that you're stripping fast to meet the current with your stripping. Otherwise you're gonna have all sorts of slack. This should start to almost be in the fish zone here. See how I'm, my voice is picking up, my excitement level is there. I'm, I'm expecting something, right? So I just mend that twitch just right in there. I'm getting close. I don't want to go into the best stuff from here because I know I will not have proper line control. If I went over in the pocket there, there's no way from this angle I would have line control with this fast, fast water separating us. So I'm gonna do another cast just up this seam right in my control zone. It's the same speed, everything's the same speed, I'm in the same seam, it's gorgeous stuff. And I know what's gonna happen here soon. So I'm just gonna do another one up here and I'm gonna meet that. And I'm almost to the place where I'm gonna reach across. 
And what I mean by that, let's go get my uh, backpack straps taken care of, get all this loose. And now I'm gonna reach across. I'm just gonna keep a couple feet of fly line, smack it, raise, and now we're walking it across. Uh, it's right beside a caddis and neither one of us got eaten. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? That always just reeks of somebody's ahead of us and somebody else has done the, ex there he is. Ah, there he was, has done the same thing. That's exact, maybe I had my eyes screwed up and that was where I saw their eyes. It was about the same distance out. You think? He's gotta have a friend in there. Oh, no, that, he just came back on it. Same fish. Right on. <laughs> same Had fish. To be, right? Yeah. Really? Get that head up, Dave. As soon as you get that head up, he'll walk in. As soon as he walks in, then you just do this. Put your rod on your yeah. calf, upside down. Turn him around. Here we go. Gorgeous little fish. Way he goes. We'll try this again. It's a short line situation, so I'll definitely reel this stuff in. Uh, and just, it's a sidewalk, so go, go shopping. <laughs> so, there he was. Oh, I didn't want to set the hook on that little guy. Sorry, buddy. Jeez. Oh, he's not, oh, he wasn't that bad at all, actually. So that guy didn't mean to set it, but I did. Right in here, short line. Anybody else gonna come off that rock shelf? Not right there, he's not. A little further across, maybe. Oops, gotta straighten out that line on around my rod. That's right, oh, there he was. Woo! Beefed up my tip at this time, right to 3X. Why? So I can do that. Upside down. See, immobilized. As I come up, I am thinking that somebody might be holding right along where the gravel meets meets the uh, flatter rock. So that's where I'm headed now. No, okay, up, flip up. How about up in there? I have a feeling that's a lot of upwelling. Oh, that's a better fish. No, that was nice. Right on. Beautiful take right in there. Not big again. It's the same size as what we've seen a lot of. Nothing huge, but that's pretty. Surf them in. Yeah, nice. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's do an underwater. Just beautiful, guys. Well, guys, right back up here, because that's just gorgeous water in here. It's that spot that you get kind of just a bit of a... Oh, there he is. Now he rolled on it. No question about it. There he is. Oh, geez. Yep. <laughs> Literally jumping out of the water to eat that. Curiosity is always there. And so I've actually decided to just come right back into the same pool that I was just fishing with uh, the beetle pattern. And I've decided to use uh, Dave's uh, deeper nymph setup here. So I'm just gonna give it a go and just see if there's anything else. Uh, up. Pause, place right off that drop off zone. That's where I'm kind of most curious about, is right where I can't see because there's a lot of, lot of water in there. So let's just see what happens with those deeper nymphs, if anything. Yeah, there it is, there's a fish. I mean, there had to be one that came to those. It's not, it's not a better fish, but there's a fish. <laughs> yep. You know when you know when a pattern is telling you something, it's, it doesn't typically change. Um, obviously there's no absolutes in fly fishing in anything and in any river when it comes to sizes, but it's been pretty evident today. We fished all the water where we'd possibly see, um, you know, a, a bigger fish and, uh, and they just haven't been there. And that's just how it is and that's how things change. And, that change is hard at times. It's really hard to accept, I guess. But it's something you have to. What is, is. There we go. Very similar in sizes. And yeah, and away she goes.
All right. It's funny how barren this used to be until the fish started coming back. All right, I'm gonna keep fishing this up right along this rock edge and ledge. It is. There'll be one in the top corner anyway, if nothing else. Just gonna keep it this side of center and then get into position properly. That's gorgeous light suddenly. Okay, up, I stick it. Yeah, I saw him come. Nice. He dropped right out of there. Beauty, had to be there. Yeah, always the high stick across that scene. Stunning, stunning way of doing it. Jeepers, hey? There we go, nice. Nice little cut. That's a more robust fish. Yeah. Okay guys, this is a classic creek where a lot of the fish are across from you and you could drop down all the way and cast upstream, but you'd be staring into nothing but glare like that. So if I was across the river over there, I'd be staring into that. So I'm staying on this side of the creek. Like actually, technically this is a river, right? Ram River. And <laughs> it was really bizarre to be back here at this size. This is like Station Creek in New Zealand. Anyway. Um, I get as close as I can to the main current on this side, on this rock shelf up here, and then I cast right across into the eddy, and then I keep my rod tip high. I make sure that there's no fly line, no leader, no nothing on the water between my rod tip and the fly, and I just hold it up there. And if I have to do little, little, little mends with my rod up in the air, that's all I do. It's just a, a high stick reach with little subtle mends, and that's what's doing it for me. I, I grew up doing this on this river, and it's funny because I still remember the day I got 257 fish as a 20-something year old. I had to count everything. Obsessive much, yes, but guess how I learned all this stuff? And it's applicable in so many places. Get close, cast a short line across the seam with a long leader. That's where that 14, 15-foot leader comes into play. Nine feet from your rod tip plus two feet of your body to on your arm that is so your arms out two three feet call it two nine foot rod 11 15 foot leader two feet of line that's 26 28 feet across and that's all you need in order to knock on the door of the fish in that back eddy across the creek and that's how you get them and it just works like a son of a gun all right so again i just get out on this rock shelf here and all i do is get a little closer see this and now <laughs> If I put my rod out from here, two feet plus nine, 11, look at that. It's only six so or so feet out to that uh, far seam line. So let's try this again. Who knows if there's one, there's six. Well, maybe not, but you know, twitch, twitch. Anybody gonna come back on that? Anybody else in there? Oh yeah, he was there. <laughs> twitch, twitch along that seam. Okay, flip that little guy. Now let's pop one. While I'm down at the river, might as well just go up, pause up, place one right up in there, right off that drop-off zone. Oh, that was, no, that's a fish. Nice fish. Took the nymph there. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Pop them up and in the net. Sweet. Ah, another pretty cutty, hey? Hey, love. So I always called this run hand flat and the reason was, um, I think back in about 98, maybe 97, the first year we are in here together. No, 96 would have been that, 96. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, casting a little blue-winged olive to a rising cutthroat in September that year, probably a little size 18 or something like that. And I was standing on these rocks up here, casting across, and my line shot out of the rod. Well, I'd standing on a rock, I'd slice my fly line. So my line, shot out i went out to get my line just dropped the rod and a cutthroat <laughs> 19 inch cutthroat came up and ate my blue winged olive and well 19 inch cutthroat on 4x and a size 20 blue winged olive and i actually managed to land the thing by hand so that is forever more known to me as hand flats and it's just a great memory on a just a gorgeous little piece of water just a perfect glide when the mayflies do come out and the fish just go Boop, thank you very much Okay, it's almost time to climb that hill. Used to always be a good fish in here, hey? 
You used to be able to see the big, you used to be able to see the big fish sitting on the bottom here. There we go. That should do it. There he is. Yeah. Right across there. Sweet. Let's see if I can stay vertical while this fish. There we go. That'll be the, that's the last one of the day, I think, love. 